So I got in an argument with a weird person, I guess. Somebody decided to post that eugenics and abortion are the same thing. And I thought to myself, well, that sounds incredibly stupid. Um, no, they're not. Nature aborts kids all the fucking time. Does nature provide and uh, do eugenics? If that's the case, how do we end up with stupid people, just like this person posting on on on, on the internet? And um, then I was into the discussion that, well, what about this? And I was I had to look it up actually, because well, I'm not a medical doctor. Um, my focus is leadership and, and psychology. So why not? Looked it up. And this is what they provided me. And this must be a new argument, a, a refined argument for pro-lifers. Um, nothing wrong with pro-life per se. If they think the sanctity of life is a thing, then great. That's their values. I tend to disagree because nature disagrees. And human behavior also disagrees. I hate to tell you this, but... Um, we wouldn't have abandoned children, beaten children, or anything of the like if children were of value. Hell, the Bible even says that children aren't that much, uh, they're worth zero until like age of two or something like that. Anyways, here's what they gave me. Pre-implantation genetic, genetic diagnosis is generally defined as the testing of pre-implantation stage embryos or oocytes in genetic, for genetic defects. So apparently, testing for genetic defects such as Down syndrome or um, dwarfism or um, some of the other um, things that you can trace in the embryo mind you, this is only one half of the genetic imp information that goes into a baby. This is why I find this hilarious. Um, they, they do it so they can see anything that might be a disorder that happens before you decide to impregnate somebody. So when somebody donates their embryos, um, sometimes this happens when a woman's going through uh, becoming infertile, They'll they'll donate their their eggs and whatnot to whoever, just so they these other people can have children. Fine, that's that's I guess a good thing. Some people can't get pregnant either, um, for whatever reason. Uh, maybe their husband's shooting blanks, their significant other, or um, their eggs don't seem to want to get fertilized, or they just don't stay in the uterus. Or you know, there's a ton of different reasons. Well, somebody cannot have a child. Um, this method of in vitro fertilization means that they take an embryo, get it pregnant, basically turn it into a child, then put it inside you as an incubator, essentially, because you want to have a child. Uh, could it be either your eggs or somebody else's eggs? Either way, what they do is they test the mother's eggs for genetic problems. Now, this person decided to argue that in doing so, they're practicing eugenics. I fail to see how. They try to argue a point that well, now they're testing for intelligence and they're testing for strength. And I'm like, no, they're not. And they have no way to determine that because everyone's intelligence and strength develops over years of time. In fact, the development of the brain doesn't even start happening until like three weeks or three months in or something like that. The nervous system doesn't start to develop. You can't test for those. There's not even a genetic marker to really determine what end is up. You can only turn to her in things like Down syndrome and the like because those have pre-embryo genetic markers in the female. And this is only one half of the pa package, as I was saying before. You cannot determine the male's uh, contribution to the equation because that is a crapshoot. They have to put a thousand or two thousand sperm out of millions in there with the egg directly in the egg so that the swimmers don't have to swim anymore. And uh, one of them out of thousands is going to go into that egg. 
one out of thousands. Um, assuming that's the sample size they use. I mean, they could use more than that, which means you have one out of a million. You cannot predict which swimmer is going to be accepted into that egg because it the, nature doesn't even, or uh, medical science doesn't even know that yet. So I found this argument to be flawed for many reasons. First, um, testing for genetic disease is not eugenics. It's no more eugenics than watching a breed of puppies and having two of the these different kinds or two of the same breed with their breeding papers of dogs and saying, oh, this is a purebred and this is a purebred. We need to mate these two to have purebred puppies. Okay. Or... Or the Pomsky mix. We need a Pomeranian and a Husky to screw. Therefore, we can have these miniature Huskies that are oh so cute. And we'll sell those. This makes no goddamn sense. Really. Um, Pro-lifers, you need a better argument. What about this? This is not, is not eugenics. At best, you're testing an egg. At worst, you forgot the other half of the equation, the millions of sperm needed to make that egg fertile. That, that just, it just doesn't happen. You can't test the male chromosomes. There's too many of them. You would have to pick a swimmer that you think is going to make it into that egg. If it's rejected by the egg for whatever fucking reason, you're wrong. And oops, now you need to try again. Because they have to be alive and swimming when they do it. You can't use the frozen ones. You can't. It, well, I guess you can implant it inside the egg forcefully. Um, but the genetic package inside the sperm is so small that they can't identify them. It's too wildly packed. The egg has a much more room, if you will, to look at genetic markers that may or may not be there. And, uh, yeah. So... Having seen this uh, argument in a little thread that I saw about um, eugenics is abortion, or abortion is eugenics, I thought I'd do a comment on it, because that is the most dumbest fucking thing I've heard in a while. Um, and it was in 2020, so my new goal in 2020 is to actually make more. Maybe I can get a little bit more um, followership, maybe build that up a little bit. Um, I don't post more than maybe once or twice a month. Um, it's usually when I have the time and when I have something to say. Well, enough shit's going on lately that I think I can find something to say every single day. Everyone else does. Um, the question is, is it meaningful? Will it help? Is it something somebody's claiming is true with no evidence? Those, those are the things that matter. Um... Some of the political stuff may or may not comment on. Who knows? It all depends on, is there evidence? <laughs> Does it, uh, is somebody claiming something is true? There's plenty to go on with this impeachment trial that I could do. Uh, but I'll save that for another time. Because uh, what's going on there is freaking comedy gold. Uh, hypocrites to the last. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you see this con this kind of uh, line of thought, pre-implantation genetic diagnosis and talking to um, pro-lifers, pretending they know genetics, pretending they know embryonics, um, they seem to go back to embryonics every time as if it's just a clump of cells. No, it's not. It's not just a clump of cells. It, it really isn't. It's a human. It's not going to come out as a giraffe or a dog or a zebra, or a monkey. It's not going to come out as a hairy ape. It's going to come out as a human. Once sperm meets egg, it will be human. Period. Our genetic process of evolution doesn't happen in one egg from one human. It happens over several generations. Um, thousands of years worth of generations. So, like, 10, 15 plus. So... You know that uh, we've evolved 200 years since this nonsense that they're pushing out. So, at any rate, um, this is another time I hit that, and I thought this was an interesting twist. They came up with something new. Too bad they're fucking wrong. So, I'll see you next time. The class is finished today. Mm.